Hey, welcome back to the channel for another video. So today we'll be looking at a new sub 250 gram quadcopter that has been just released into the market called the Faith Mini by Seafly. And if you've been paying close attention to the channel lately, you've probably seen me post on it already. Now I know that there's been a lot of disappointment regarding Seafly in general, and from a customer standpoint, I think that it's only fair and understandable that many have lost their confidence in their products, especially when it comes to customer service. But moving on, we have the Faith Mini here now, and we're going to check it out and see what it's all about. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at the quad itself. One thing I have to say honestly is that Seafly does put out some interesting designs, even if it's inspired by others. And overall, the build quality of their products is not bad. Now this unit here is one of the first test samples released only to a selected few, so it's not the final completed version in terms of firmware and software, so it's missing a few functions and features, which I'll explain in a bit. As you can see, it obviously uh, resembles a DJI Mini 2 when looking at it, but that's with all minis that you see on the market today. Uh, this one here does have an interesting aerodynamic design. I also like how they've added two smaller leg stands on the back that look similar to the design of the Altair Nano Plus, but the original Faith 2 already had this design, so it's only right that they would pass it down to their mini. Now the camera is what most of us are curious about. They state that it has a 1 over 2.8 inch Sony CMOS sensor, which sounds like it should produce some really good photos and video, but they don't provide any information on the fixed aperture. As for video, the Faith Mini films in 2.7K at 25 frames per second, as well as in 4K at 15 frames per second. Not sure why they weren't able to make it the standard 30 frames per second, but it is what it is. Now on this sample unit here, it can only film in 4K at 15 frames per second, so that's what you'll be seeing in this video. The 2.7K option isn't functioning unfortunately, uh, but once it's officially released to the public, those units will have both resolutions available, as well as the newest firmware installed on it, which will include all of the missing features that this one here does not include at the moment. Also when I say 4K, I'm talking about interpolated 4K, which is basically a lower video resolution size that's been upscaled to 4K size. As for photo sizes, you can snap pictures at 4096 by 2560 and at 2088 by 1156 in JPEG format. Now what's disappointing is that it's only in 8 megapixels, so the quality won't be that great. But for the price, I guess you can't complain much or you can save yourself a few more bucks and get yourself a DJI Mini or Altel Nano. The Faith Mini does have a three axis gimbal stabilizer, which will make your videos look much more smoother, giving you that cinematic feel to it, which everybody loves to see. These motors here are 1503 KV motors, which are supposed to resist up to level five winds. is supposed to reach a maximum speed of up to 14 meters per second in sports mode, which is pretty fast.
As for the props, they look like the ones you see on the DJI Mini 3 Pro, and they also feel very sturdy and made from a good quality material. I noticed while hovering that it does have a nice low pitch sound to it, which is very similar to the stealth props made by Master Airscrew. On the bottom, it has an optical flow camera and also what appears to be an infrared sensor, but it's not, it's just for show. Uh, it also looks like they've incorporated an internal cooling fan, just like the Altel Nano Plus, but again, it's not. Now, I'm not sure if it will have an actual working fan on the units released to the public, but as for this one here, it doesn't have it, unfortunately. On the bottom of the battery bay, you have a micro SD card slot that accepts cards of up to 128 gigabytes. The battery is a 7.7 volt, 2100 milliamp hour two cell lipo with a maximum flight time of around 34 minutes. The charging time is around two and a half hours using a five volt two amp adapter. But what I found interesting is that it actually charges much faster when I connect it to my mini power bank. The remote is basically the same design as the original Seafly Faith 2, but with some updates done to it. This time they made it so that it connects to your phone via an OTG cable, rather than connecting through Wi-Fi, which is a pain in the butt and unreliable at times. The joystick gimbals do feel really nice and tight, and is similar in build quality to the RC of the Hubson Xeno Mini Pro. The RC also has an internal battery built into it, which is a 3.7 volt, 3000 milliamp. And you can charge it right over here on the top using the micro USB charging cable that's included. The antennas are foldable, and on the bottom you have the phone mount holder, which also folds out. On the front you have four buttons, which are your on and off, the return to home and pause, the take off and landing, and the FN button for customizing functions. In the middle you have the on and off switch for sports mode. These four indicator lights are your battery power. And this one here tells you if your quad is paired to the remote. It turns green when it's paired, and red if it's not. On the top you have the photo and video buttons, as well as a gimbal wheel for controlling the camera's tilt position. The RC operates under the 5.8 GHz frequency and is supposed to have a maximum transmission range of around 3,000 meters, which is way more than enough signal coverage for this little guy. Now the one thing I dislike about it is that the phone mount holder is at the bottom instead of on the top. I personally prefer to view the phone screen from the top of the RC because it just feels more comfortable. The Faith Mini uses the new Seaflight Go app on both Android and iOS, but at the current time it's only available on iOS. Like I said before, this is a test sample, so many of the settings, functions, and smart features are incomplete and are not available at the moment. Anyway, let me show you guys how to get it all started, and then I'll show you a short video sample. First, turn on the remote. Now turn on the quad. Wait for the quad to pair with the RC. Once you hear a long beep and the indicator lights turn green, this means that it's been paired successfully. Next, connect the cable to your phone. Make sure you allow the app all of the permissions, including locations, in order for it to work properly. Now open the Seafly Go app, and you should immediately have an FPV feed. To start the motors, press the joysticks down and out. And to turn them off, repeat the same.
So what are my thoughts on it? Well, I think that for the price point, it's a decent little quad. Of course, you're not going to get that same video quality as a DJI or Alltel Robotics product, but for a cheap, affordable alternative mini, I think it does a good job. It does fly very smoothly and it handles fairly well in the wind. The three axis gimbal does a decent job at stabilizing the video, but you do get some slight jittering from time to time, which is expected at this price point. Uh, the FPV image feed was pretty good on this quad. I didn't experience any lags at all, so nothing to complain about there. Now the battery flight time was not as I expected. It only gave me around 22 minutes, which is not bad, but I expected to get a little bit more out of it. Like I said before, there's a lot of features that are not available on it, so I wasn't able to test any of them out, like the smart features or change any of the camera settings like the ISO, exposure value, etc. Anyway, this one's a wrap. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like what you saw, do give it a thumbs up, and feel free to subscribe if you want to. May God bless you all, stay safe, be good, and I'll catch you on the next one.